What if you find a random chemical with no label? Well, yes, that's one option. Wouldn't it be great to simply inject a sample in the machine, press a button, and instantly know what it is? Well, let me tell you about the gas chromatograph mass spectrometer. The GCMS is a combination of two powerful methods of analysis in one serious instrument. The chromatograph side physically separates each compound before sending them one by one to the mass spectrometer. GCMS are popular in environmental and forensic lab, and as far as I'm aware, it's not illegal to own one. I found this one on eBay again, and it was surprisingly affordable. This is the uh, Thermo Finnegan DSQ and Trace GC2000 combo. This is a mid-90s unit, maybe older than some viewers. Now, I've set up a few other instruments on this channel, but to get in two 20-something-year-old to talk to each other and controlled by a PC that will only run the software on Windows 2000 was a different level of frustration. This is why I didn't set up the auto sampler, which uh, would have added yet another layer of complexity. Both units needed some TLC, and setting up a workable method took some time. The learning curve for the Excalibur software can sometimes be steep. Thankfully, the manual is still available online. Anyway, you only need a few microliters to get a good idea of what is present, and because of the mass spectrometer, you can even identify the isotopic ratio. Of course, there's limitation. Water, strong acid, and base should be avoided, and heat-sensitive chemicals like explosives are better analyzed on HPLC. But for organic chemicals like chloroform here, and others less volatile, the GCMS does a fantastic job. Modern unit can reach detection limit in the sub part per trillion, but I'll be happy with mid ppm level detection. So here, I prepare a solution of hexane, dichloromethane, trichloroethylene, pisaline, and cyclohexanone, each at 100 microliters dissolved in 100 milliliters of methanol. I injected the 1 microliter, and this is what a single microliter looked like. In it, there is a 0.6 millionth of a gram of hexane, 1.3 millionth of a gram of a DCM, 1.4 millionth of a gram of a pisaline, and a 0.9 millionth of a gram of cyclohexanone. These are low ppm level detection, and you can see some chemicals have a much better response than others. I use this uh, general purpose 100 meter restec column, and it may not be sensitive enough for certain compounds, so they will not be separated and will increase the background dropping my sensitivity, but for this video's purpose, that's a problem I can live with. Okay, now when the run is complete, I can look at the chromatogram up here. By clicking on the peak I'm interested in, this uh, lower window displays the mass spectrum recorded for that particular peak. Each peak is a single molecule and uh, will have its own mass signature. I can then compare this with a known spectrum in the library to identify it. In this case, trichloroethylene. And this one here, P xylene. Even the meta and ortho isomer can be identified. Notice the software indicates the percentage of confidence here 97%. Pretty cool, right? YouTube is full of great chemistry channels like these. Most follow the same playbook an introduction of the desired product, a description of the synthesis and procedure, followed by the final yield and sometimes a purity check. On rare occasion, a professional lab can provide analytical report and confirmation. Wheeler Scientific briefly touched on the GCMS on his box per video. I think a dedicated instrument would be an awesome addition for these already great channels. Speaking of YouTube, I would like to show my support for an interesting fellow YouTuber named Photonic Luminescence, Photonic with a K. This young man is fascinated by astrophotography and light bulbs. I think the real talent is with uh, people who can do a lot with very little. Much like many others, he deserves some encouragement and recognition. Now, organic chemistry is not really my strong suit, but when I think of a complex mix of volatile organics, I think of gas, as in gasoline. So I grabbed a sample of 87 grade and injected about 2 microliters at a temperature gradient for 30 minutes. Here's the result. Since I'm not really interested in quantifying anything, I can do without a standard, and uh, with uh, their unique mass spectrum, I can identify isopentane and n-pentane here and here, trans 1, 2 dimethylcyclopentane here, toluene over here, P xylene again here, 1, 2, 4, trimethyl, benzene, etc. This seemed to match the known composition of gas analyzed by the real pros. Here in the US, gasoline is lead free since 1975, but uh, small aircraft, boats, and other niche applications are still allowed to burn leaded gasoline. So I went to a small airfield to collect a sample of the blue Afgas 100LL and analyzed it. 
when uh, looking for a specific molecule, this uh, forest of peaks can be intimidating. And uh, I don't have time to go through every single one of them to find what I'm looking for. But luckily, I know exactly what I'm looking for. So I can search for it in the library and select the only ion masses I'm interested in. Now I can set up the MS to look for those ions specifically and reject everything else. This is a single ion monitoring or SIM feature. And there it is, tetraethyl lead. I did eventually find it on the chromatogram. Oh, well, this one. Oh, well, here. Wow, a textbook spectrum. Look at that. Very nice. I'm going to save it to uh, my library. It looks so nice. It's great. It's perfect detection. Look at this shit. Awesome. All right, there you go. Tetra ethyl lead there. Excellent. Of course, I had to collect some diesel for comparison, and the uh, distribution of carbon chain is higher than gas. In the uh, 8 to 10 carbon atom range, a lot of decane, hexadecane, dodecane like these. Looking back at my first GC analysis on gasoline in this video from four years ago, I was pretty on point. Back then, I also looked for caffeine from coffee and extracted something I assume was lemonine from citrus, but could not identify with certainty. So now let's revisit that. Here I use DCM to extract caffeine again, and that large peak I've obtained the first time is actually vanilline. I truly did not know vanilline was added to my brand of coffee. I guess I should have read the label. It says right here, artificial flavors. Day. Now if you ignore this large smudge from the previous injection, here is caffeine. It took a few tries to get it, but uh, this is another textbook detection. Wow, pure caffeine right there. However, I was correct when looking at lemonine from the DCM extraction of oranges. There it is, lemonine. Another source of exotic molecule to hunt for is plants. This uh, mass spec can only see masses from about 2 to 1,000, so a lot of large molecules like amino acids and proteins will not be seen, but there's plenty of very interesting natural chemicals. This is the uh, infamous poison hemlock. This one is very common. It's a little bit late in the season, they are a little dry, but uh, it can easily be confused with other plants. Like this uh, Queen Anne's lace right here, you can tell by the spikes under the flower right here. This one is uh, harmless. Another one that looked like poison hemlock is the white parsley. This one looked very similar than poison hemlock without the uh, purple splashing all over the stems. If you look at the branches, they have this uh, U shape. And this one is actually eatable. Now, I'm not gonna pretend to be a botanist or an expert on everything, but uh, I'm not gonna eat that one, even though I'm pretty sure this is not poison hemlock. As the name suggests, Poison hemlock is not part of a healthy breakfast. In fact, in antiquity, a tea made of this plant was the one method of execution. You may have heard of uh, Socrates. The toxicity of the plant is somewhere between sodium cyanide and white phosphorus. The LD50 is difficult to establish since this is a cocktail of natural uh, alkaloid, mostly conine. And uh, let's collect a sample to see if we can pick it up with the GCMS. All part of it should be toxic. Excellent. I grinded my branches in the blender, put them in the round bottom flask, added DCM and reflux for an hour. After cooling, the solvent is first passed through a bed of anhydrous sodium sulfate to remove any potential water. Since DCM is more volatile than what's dissolved in it, we can just evaporate it in this concentrator, leaving just one milliliter. This is then stored in amber glass vial ready for analysis. I could have asked the lab assistant for this preparation, but I think she was busy that day. Anyway, here's the poison hemlock analysis. The active poison conine showed up with its main peak at 84 and molecular mass at 127. My spectrum is here and this matches the library here. Interestingly, I found what I think is adrenaline. I didn't expect that. This uh, obvious large one in the middle did not give me any conclusive hit, but seemed to be related to quinine. Towards the end, we even find some barbituric based molecule like this one. Finally, this big one here is just what happens when uh, you get toluene contamination. When it comes to the diversity of natural chemicals, the GC cannot always fully separate every one of them. So we'll end up with a complex mixture of ion arriving together at the detector, and this is very challenging to uh, read. It would be next to impossible to figure out 
which ion belong to which molecule. The library I'm using is just a demo version with barely 12,000 most common chemicals, so getting a match does not happen often. Paying for the full version would be stupid. There's also a constant noise, especially at mass 207 and 281. This is the slow degradation of the carlin from oxygen intrusion. Uh, even after a 10 hour bake out, I could not fully get rid of it and it gets worse at higher temperature. Fortunately, I can select a range on the spectrum and remove most of this noise using the subtract function. I spent many hours browsing and matching every spectrum and comparing data on this sample, but this was honestly enjoyable. I went shopping for some apples and rinsed them in hexane. Apples are notorious for pesticides residue, but I did not get anything other than the farnesine. Farnesine here is partially responsible for the smell of fresh apples. Restec does make a colon specifically for pesticide analysis and mine is just not sensitive enough for that. I make it look easy and straightforward, but this was anything but a trivial weekend project. Learning the software and the instrumentation was frustrating, tedious and confusing. I made some expensive mistakes and reached plenty of dead ends. But when things finally started to work, it was time to celebrate with a toast which I just had to analyze first. Here's my favorite drinks with all its glorious flavors like ethyl acetate, azobutyl alcohol, 2-methyl and 3-butanol, and of course benzyl alcohol. Whiskey is a rich mixture of molecular delight. If you remember the Ion Chromatograph video, I was able to pick some of that here. The GC takes it further in precision and fun. I can always find more stuff to analyze, but for now, I'll focus my energy on trying to set up my instrument for quantitative analysis. I thought of a real world application, the blood alcohol content. So if you want to see a drunk Neptunium, stay tuned. Finally, I'd like to thank Frisky Dingo for his generous gifts and the opportunity to analyze a suspicious iridium sample. Being a Patreon and dedicated subscriber, he's also an element collector and thought he purchased some iridium. I was able to verify the scam and confirm his suspicion. This is a tungsten powder with little to no iridium. Sorry, my friend. Oh, that's it? I wish there was more. That sucks. <laughs>